Hi there, Keith Whittier here with another blog. Keith who? Wait a second, I know what some of you are thinking. That guy kind of looks familiar. Didn't he used to blog about movies all the time? Yes, I did. And I apologize for being really crappy at it over the last few months. I do hope to get better. But this is the time of year for forgiveness. So I'm asking you guys to forgive me. This is also the time of year where we all start talking about the best of. So the best of the year. And in a couple weeks I will be providing my best movies and worst movies of the year. But today I want to talk about television. Now last year I came before you and I talked about my five, my, my, my five favorite shows. And the list really hasn't changed. I still like watching The Young and the Restless. Yes, feel free to laugh. I also still enjoy going over to my father's house on a Monday night to watch Monday Night Football and Monday Night Raw. I also still enjoy Modern Family, for I still think it's probably the best, uh, the best comedy on television. Even though sometimes it looks like it might be dipping into Jumping the Shark Land, it's still a fantastic show. But today, instead of going over the exact same shows I went over last year and talking about how much I like them, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to come out and make a statement. Statement is this. For my money, Breaking Bad is the greatest dramatic television show of all time. Now, that's an interesting statement to make. Now, my favorite movie of all time is Heat, but I wouldn't necessarily say that Heat's the greatest movie ever made, it's just the greatest movie ever made for me. But when it comes to television, when it comes to Breaking Bad, I don't think there's another show that comes close to it. In fact, I think there's Breaking Bad, there's a couple of floors that are empty, and then there's everything else. Now, there, now you might be a fan of shows like Lost or The Sopranos or The Wire, or you might be a little more old school than maybe St. Elsewhere and Hill Street Blues and L.A. Law or anything in between or anything past that, before that. And that's fine. I'm merely giving you my opinion. Because when I think of, when I think of Breaking Bad, I think of it as being a perfectly constructed television series from top to bottom. Now, let's take a step back for those of you not in the know and give you a little, a little uh, refresher. When I first came across Breaking Bad, I was on an airplane heading out to Vancouver, probably to see a BC Lions game, and I looked at the different television shows that were available, and I saw Breaking Bad was one of them. Had never really heard of it, didn't know much about it. It was the pilot episode, and I said, let me give it a try. And what I saw was as follows. A very underemployed high school chemistry teacher by the name of Walter White was living day to day until he realized that he had inoperable lung cancer. Having not the best insurance, he, know, he, he realized that he had to find a way to help make money and leave money for his family. His brother-in-law, Hank, was a DEA agent, of course, the Drug Enforcement Agency. And Hank just had a huge bust, and Walt was, was, was amazed at all the money that was brought in, and he said, well, how much money is it? And he said, well, we probably seized about 700000 which is probably normal for one of these busts. That got Walt to thinking. So Walt went on a ride along with Hank, and then wouldn't you know, as the, as the police went in through the front door, out the back door came one of Walt's former students, Jesse Pinkman. So Walt teams up with Jesse and says, basically, I know the chemistry, you, make, you know the business, I want to make meth with you. And this is the part where Walt, the seemingly nice, you know, father of, uh, father of uh, one, soon to be two, broke bad. Now what happened over the, over, the, over the course of 62 episodes is nothing short of remarkable. Everybody talks about the fact that it was essentially taking Mr. Chips and turning him into Scarface. And in its, in its most simplistic form, that's correct. But on a granular scale, what ended up happening was we saw the absolute phenomenal transition of any character that we've ever seen on television. We saw a man go from basically being humble and shy and to some, to some degree somewhat weak to being this absolute huge meth kingpin. So over the, course of the, over the course of the seasons, we basically saw Walter White go from somebody who was making meth just to, just to have enough money to leave as a nest egg for his family, to somebody who became obsessed with the power, became obsessed with the cat and mouse game that he was playing with, with, uh, with the authorities, to being somebody who had to be in charge. Now Walter White wasn't the only interesting character that we got to learn over the 62 episodes. There was Jesse Pinkman. The meth, dealing, uh, the meth dealing former student of Walt who went through many transformations himself. Somebody who didn't care about life, to somebody who cared about others more than himself, to, to, to somebody who just wanted to party and everything in between. This show gave us such riveting, rich characters like, uh, like Giancarlo Esposito's Gustavo Fring. Now last year you might recall me talking about Gustavo Fring and saying to myself, one of the most fascinating things about this character was he could be anybody. He could be your next door neighbor who comes over and, and, and offers to cut your lawn. But the next thing you know, at the end of the day, he's offering to cut somebody's throat because they might have crossed him. 
because you just never knew what was going to happen with Gustavo. And I remember thinking to myself, in season three and, and parts of season four, Gustavo was probably the most dangerous character I've seen on television. But at the same token, I didn't see the full endgame in sight at that point, because that title belonged to Walter White. Now, for those of you who know me, you'll know that I'm not a very high-maintenance type of person. Now, if I was to say to you, what were you doing on September 29th, some of you might say, well, I might have been watching Sunday Night Football, I might have been having a Sunday Night Dinner. What I'll say to you was that I was in Miami getting ready to go on a cruise. And during that time, booking the hotel, again, not being a high-maintenance person, as they're going through all the amenities of the hotel, the only thing that was of interest to me is, do you guys get AMC? Because I want to make sure that we can watch Breaking Bad. Now, that was the night of the finale of Breaking Bad. And another reason why I'm absolutely in love with this show is when you think about a lot of shows, they, 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 they leave the party too late. So Lost was a good show, had a couple of ho-hum seasons, and then they probably ended up leaving a little later than they should. 24 was a fantastic show up until season 5, but then season 6, season 7, season 8, not necessary. Vince Gilligan had an endgame, and he was, he, was, he was wise enough to say, there's no need to stretch this out. I'm telling a story. There's a beginning, there's a middle, and this is how we're going to end it. And absolutely, the, the, the finale of Breaking Bad shattered records for the show. But at the same token, the way that it ended gave us a complete, full story. I miss Breaking Bad. There's not going to be a show like Breaking Bad for some time. I think Breaking Bad has set the mantle for what other shows need to aspire to. When I think about the last season, or the last half season, I think about episodes such as Oxymandias. And not to give anything away for people who don't know, uh, don't know um, a lot about the show, if you were to put this in movie terms, Oxymandias is the Empire Strikes Back of the Breaking Bad, uh, the Breaking Bad series. It is the ultimate cliffhanger episode. It leaves so many, it, it, it conjures up so many different things that have happened in the previous, uh, the previous episodes leading into it. Also, there's the fact that this is the only episode in TV history that has scored a perfect 10 on IMDb's viewer rating scale. Think about that. Think about every single episode of every single television show in Oxymandias ranks at the top. And then if we, if we jump two more episodes ahead to Felina, the final episode ever of Breaking Bad, the, uh, the series finale, it, it touched on so many phenomenal points. And unlike a, a series that just uh, ends by fading to black, and no disrespect to Soprano fans, this gave, us a, this gave fans a total and complete ending. Now, of course, being the last season of Breaking Bad, it's very, it's very easy to think about the last, uh, the last season and the last few images we saw. But pick any season, and there's absolutely no weak point. Even an episode that's debated so much, which is the Fly episode, an episode where Walt and Jesse just spend the entire episode talking, that just shows the true richness of the show. Because it shows that it, people don't have to die every week, things don't have to get blown up. The richness of this show is in the writing, and the phenomenal dialogue that was part of that episode. So, do I like Breaking Bad? Absolutely. Do I think it's the greatest show ever? Absolutely. I would absolutely love to hear your comments and your thoughts on it. Maybe hear what you think. Your what? Uh, hear your thoughts on what your favorite television show is. It's not. Uh, uh, it's not a lie that I would say about once a week I go back and I watch a couple episodes from different seasons, and I think uh, I think to myself it just keeps getting better and better. I salute uh, Vince Gilligan as being an absolute genius. Him and his writing, his directing team, and the entire cast and company that made Breaking Bad. I think the AMC network is absolutely phenomenal. Um, you know, with hit shows like uh, The Killing, The Walking Dead, Mad Men, um, they absolutely blew it out of the park with, uh, with, with this show. Think to yourself, when this show ended, I mean, this was, this was probably one of the biggest pop culture events of the year, and with so much on the line, the, episode didn't, the, uh, the, the series didn't disappoint. So, if you haven't had a chance to, definitely go out and check out Breaking Bad. Uh, for those of you who have Netflix, you can definitely catch it on, on there as well as, uh, as, well as iTunes. Uh, again, you can always follow me on Twitter at CFL underscore fan or check out my Facebook page at facebook.com slash Thanks so much for taking the time to uh, watch this and take care.